Tyrannosaurus Rex, king of the dinosaur age. Let's be real, who doesn't love a good old T-Rex, right? I mean, everyone's been obsessed with it for over a century now. But the truth is, our image of this dinosaur might be a tad outdated. Stick around because we're about to reveal the real T-Rex. And trust me, it's not what you've been picturing. Tyrannosaurus roamed the ancient landmass called Laurasia millions of years ago, starting in the Jurassic era around 66 million years ago. This was towards the end of the Cretaceous period, when they were the big, scary meat-eaters, ruling the roost in places like North America, Europe, and Asia. The first T-Rex skeletons were discovered back in the early 1900s. But fast forward to the 70s, when there was a dinosaur renaissance, and suddenly, T-Rex was seen with a horizontal spine, flat back, and tail in the air. Basically, not the Godzilla-style pose we all grew up with. But, and there's always a but, many paleo artists are still sketching T-Rex with the old-school upright posture. However, more than a hundred years of digging up dino bones has taught us some pretty different things, including the fact that this gigantic creature could even swim. The first nearly complete skeleton of this amazing creature was discovered back in 1902 by a paleontologist named Barnum Brown in Hell Creek, Montana, USA. Brown and his gang were pretty hardcore. They used dynamite as their tool of choice to blast through the rocks around Big Dry Creek Stream. And it was no walk in the park, scorching temperatures hitting a crazy 43.3 degrees Celsius, 110 degrees Fahrenheit, and not a tent in sight to escape the blazing sun. But hey, hard work pays off, right? They hit the jackpot with not one, but three T-Rex individuals, including two almost complete skeletons. Now, one of these impressive finds is proudly on display at the American Museum of Natural History. Now, the name Tyrannosaurus Rex was coined by a guy named Osborne back in 1905. The name is a mashup of Greek and Latin, meaning tyrant lizard and king, respectively. So, it's basically the king of the tyrant lizards. Quite the title, honestly. T-Rex had some famous cousins too, like Albertosaurus and Giganotosaurus. Scientists have stumbled upon about 20 T-Rex skeletons, although most are partial. But there's this one gem named the dueling dinosaurs, an almost complete adolescent T-Rex tangled up with the Triceratops. If we look at the fossil records, these Tyrannosaurs evolved over a whopping 100 million years. That's a long time. They had these unique features in their bones, especially their skull and pelvis, which make them easy to spot. Back when they first came into existence, they were small with long arms and just three fingers. But as time went on, the T-Rex got bigger and scarier. By the end of the Cretaceous, they were huge and looked almost the same as each other, like a big family of monsters. Their heads were massive, with this box-like shape and big eyes, giving them a keen sense of smell. Their necks were thick and strong, supporting their heavy heads, and boy, their jaws were like something out of a horror movie. They had these massive teeth, sharp like saws, that could crunch through pretty much anything. Plus, they'd leave these telltale marks on their prey's bones, like Triceratops. Their bodies were kind of short, and their arms were tiny with just two digits, but they had holes in their bones that helped keep them light, despite their size. And even though their arms looked small, they were as long as a grown man's arm. For the longest time, scientists scratched their heads, wondering what on earth those little arms were good for. But in 2018, some paleontologists spilled the beans at a conference, suggesting those tiny arms were more flexible and useful than we gave them credit for. These researchers went all tech-savvy, using X-ray imagery and computer models to check out the joints of T-Rex's modern relatives, specifically turkeys and alligators. While their research hasn't hit the shelves yet, they threw out a tantalizing proposal. Those puny arms might have been handy for bringing prey in close for a bite. But before we start praising T-Rex as the ultimate predator, let's talk about speed. The long, sturdy leg bones of T-Rex have sparked debates. Some argued these dinos were pretty darn fast, capable of running like ostriches. However, here's the thing. The muscles and tendons responsible for running aren't preserved in the fossil record, so estimating T-Rex's speed has been like shooting in the dark. Scaling up from smaller animals doesn't cut it either, 
because big guys like T-Rex put way more strain on their bones and muscles. So, the mystery of T-Rex's running abilities remains, well, a bit of a mystery. However, scientists have thrown out a whole spectrum of top speeds, ranging from a modest 18 to a jaw-dropping 70 kilometers per hour. In 2017, a groundbreaking study took a fresh approach, blending biomechanical simulations with stress measurements on the dino skeleton. And guess what they found? If T-Rex even attempted a sprint, it would put too much strain on its leg bones, risking fractures. So, instead of a full-blown sprint, T-Rex was probably limited to a brisk walk or a birdie sort of jog, maxing out at around 30 km per hour. Yep, that means an Olympic sprinter could easily outpace one. A little quick sidestep about the Tyrannosaurus ontogeny. There are no mid-sized predators. It just goes straight from Dromaeosaurs, like Dakotoraptor, right up to Tyrannosaurus. Which is weird, until scientists worked out that Tyrannosaurus take almost as long to grow up as humans do, reaching adolescent size and then plateauing there for 10 years or so before turning into the huge, gnarled adults. So Tyrannosaurus was the mid-sized predator of the Hell Creek Formation. The younger individuals hunted smaller animals, and then they grew up and changed niches to hunt large endmontosaurs and triceratops, which is wild, but not for long. Tyrannosaurus rex had an average lifespan of around 28 years. Back in the day, the landscape looked quite different from what we see now. The current dry and grassy areas were probably more of an open woodland and a Louisiana floodplain when the T-Rex was living. And coming to the weather, it was warmer back then, with lots of flowering plants blooming. T-Rex wasn't a loner either. In fact, it lived in a bustling community with all sorts of dinosaurs, mammals, and insects. Now for some size comparison. A T-Rex was about 40 feet long, roughly twice the length of a modern elephant, and standing tall at almost 12 feet, it was slightly taller than your average African bush elephant. But a Tyrannosaurus rex weighed in at more than 8 tons, and that's double the weight of an elephant. There's also another thing recent fossils have helped discover. They show us that lots of dinosaurs, even T. rex's cousins, had these soft, fluffy feathers. Back in 2004, they found Delong Paradoxus, a little T. rex relative, having some basic feathers. Then, in 2012, they uncovered Eutyranus, which was a massive feathered dino, totally changing our ideas. We used to think only the little dinos needed feathers for warmth, but Eutyranus flipped that script. Suddenly, we're thinking all Tyrannosaurs, even big old T-Rex, might have been fluffy. But there is a twist here though, because in 2017, they checked out some fresh T-Rex skin fossils and found scales, no feathers. Now, paleontologists are deep into a debate about it. Maybe baby T-Rex were fluffy, who knows, but they most probably had more of a leathery, scaly look. Now here's one thing you should know about the T-Rex's tail. It was stiff and pointed, and it would wag from side to side when the big guy was on the run. Some scientists think it helped with balance. You see, the T-Rex had this massive head, and to stay agile and make quick turns, that tail must have played a crucial role in counterbalancing angular momentum. Now, let's talk about that impressive jaw. It measured a whopping 4 feet, or 1.2 meters long, and the lower jaw had some flexibility to it. T-Rex had 50 to 60 thick, conical, serrated teeth. They came in various sizes, with some as small as 3 to 6 inches, or 8 to 16 centimeters long, while others reached a staggering 13 inches, or 33 centimeters. And get this, T-Rex could actually grow its teeth back. It took about two years for a replacement tooth to grow inside the jaw, alongside the root of the current tooth. The front teeth were D-shaped and great for gripping prey. Scientists even suspected that T-Rex could crunch through bones, and they weren't wrong. Fossil discoveries of T-Rex poop showed bits of bones in there, when it comes to bite power, its powerful jaws and teeth could exert up to six tons of pressure. That's enough to crush a car in half with just one bite. It's pretty solid evidence that T-Rex was practically built for bone crunching. This ultimate carnivore could devour a staggering 500 pounds or 230 kilograms of meat and bones in a single bite. Now, let's crunch some numbers to see how much food a six-ton T-Rex would need daily. 
To put it in perspective, an African bush elephant weighing between 2 to 7 tons munches on around 70,000 calories per day. Some estimates suggest T-Rex would require around 140 kilograms of meat daily. So, what was it eating? Well, it likely went after herds of horned and duck-billed dinosaurs. But it was also an opportunist, munching on anything from carcasses to unfortunate T-Rexes. Now, when T-Rex locked onto its prey, it went into attack mode, holding that lower jaw wide open. Its bite was so intense that its teeth could crush through bones immediately. When facing larger prey, it would use its colossal feet and claws to immobilize the victim. Once the prey weakened from blood loss, T-Rex would grip its neck or flank between its teeth, then give a head jerk, tearing out massive chunks of meat. Now, surprisingly, evidence suggests that this massive creature could swim, despite its enormous size. Although primarily land-based predators, T-Rex and similar dinosaurs classified as theropods possessed bird-like hind limbs. These limbs designed for walking and running could also facilitate swimming through a robust kicking motion. Fossil records reveal score-like marks, known as swim traces, created by the claws of two-legged dinosaurs like T-Rex as they swam across lakes, rivers, and seabeds. Moreover, detailed examination using CT scans on fossilized skeletons indicates a hollow bone structure in many theropods. This structural adaptation would have contributed to the buoyancy of their massive bodies, supporting the hypothesis that Tyrannosaurus rex was capable of swimming. It probably made use of this behavior to broaden its feeding opportunities, and despite what you might think, the large size of T-Rex wouldn't be a hindrance to its ability to swim. Here's why. Observing present-day examples, some of the heaviest animals are known to swim, including modern relatives of T-Rex, such as giant flightless birds like ostriches and emus. These birds, with a body shape similar to T-Rex, display impressive swimming abilities, even making sea crossings of several miles to access new food sources on offshore islands. But even with these capabilities, venturing into coastal waters 66 million years ago would not have been without risks for T-Rex. The presence of aquatic predators like Mosasaurus, known to hunt beneath the waves, would have posed a threat to it, particularly the young ones making them potential targets for these dangerous aquatic hunters. So, while T-Rex might have been good swimmers, they likely only made short trips to the ocean, cause with Mosasaurus patrolling the coast, there's no way they could dominate the waves. To wrap it up, T-Rex was certainly the biggest two-legged predator in the late Cretaceous ecosystem, and it was one of the largest predators ever to live on land. Do you think it had feathers or scaly skin like other reptiles? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.